I find it interesting how each of these three books have their own story in them, but at the same time, there's this underlying story that we finally conclude in this book. Hi guys, it's April, and I'm going to do this review the same way I do all of my other reviews. I'm going to have the non-spoilery section at front, and then the spoiled fill dump afterwards in case you don't want to spoil yourself. Of course, I will tell you when that section happens, and I will put a little thing on the screen so that you can mute me in case you want to continue watching me color this beautiful, beautiful cover. But with that, I am just going to jump into this review. A Song of Flight by Juliette Merlier is book three in the Warrior Bards novels. We get even more characters in this book. So not only are we following Levon and Dao and their beautiful magical friendship romance thing that is happening, but we continue to see everything that's going on with Brock and his wife and now his child. But we also we also get the brother. We get we get Galen and his his prince. So this story continues on in that underlying story arc where we're trying to figure out what these crow folk are and why they are constantly attacking. And of course you have other other people who are mixed into this because in this last book we met a lot of Dao's family and they weren't they weren't all good and some of those characters come into play when um, some people get it in their head that maybe these crow folk could be used for their own purposes. So we have all of these storylines converging all into this one story arc of these crow folk and home. This book has Juliet Murillet's traditional writing style, which I love so much. I think my the only drawback for this was the fact that there were so many characters. So the characters that I really wanted a lot of focus didn't necessarily get that focus. But at the same time, it was also giving you a wider view of everything that was going on because we got to see all of these ties come together and all of these things click into place. I will note that I do need to go back and read the Blackthorn and Grimm novels because there is some key things that come into play with this novel that probably if I had some of that connection, I, as always, I never read anything in order. So I, you will probably see reviews for that series after this. Overall, I do like how it came together. There was a, a little bit of pacing issues with me at, at points, and maybe that's because we did have so many characters and some of them I liked more than others. I do like how each chapter immediately tells you which character we're about to see the point of view from. But I am also a traditionalist where I got my Seven Waters, Daughter of the Forest kind of vibes. I, I liked seeing the whole story through one major perspective because the way things started to get a little choppy for me, I, I didn't quite enjoy as much as I have her other novels. But you did get to see some of that folklore come to life and you did get to see these characters kind of find their place in the world as tends to happen throughout her novels. So the fact that these siblings came together to do this one thing, I really truly enjoyed. I'm guessing at this point that if you have started this series, you're going to complete this series because you kind of have to know what's going to happen. So yes, definitely pick up this book. I, I highly recommend that you do it because I can talk about it all day. But if you really want to feel for what happens in this journey, you're going to need to read it. But this is the point in which I am going to go into some spoiled filled thoughts. Of course, you can mute me and continue watching, and then at the end, I will say hello again. Otherwise, leave a comment down below about, I don't know, why you haven't read this book yet, because you kind of do. If you're watching this review, it means you've read the rest of the series. You should probably read this series. 
But at this point, go ahead, mute me if you haven't. Otherwise, I'm, I'm just going to get into it. I have to say, I called it at the end of the last book where Brock and his wife, I didn't see that ending well. I know they both have kind of this mixed race going on in them that leads them to act out in ways that maybe we don't traditionally understand. But the fact that she was so black and white and and Brock was really seeing these crow folk as as trapped beings and wanting to help them and, and the fact that that's what got him in trouble and kicked out and the fact that his wife didn't even want the kid around was heartbreaking. But also the writing was on the wall long before this poor kid was born. I never saw this ending well. And I'm glad that ultimately this isn't going to like screw up the kid in some way because it sounds like she is going to have quite a life from what we learn at the end. But just the devastation of that dynamic is heart-wrenching. And the fact that we have three relationships that are the crux of this whole storyline and each of them are vastly different I have to say, is kind of nice because in a lot of the traditional YA stories, you have this this phenomenon where everyone pairs up and they get this happily ever after. And then all the relationships look the same, even though the characters might be different. Here you don't get that. You got this nice diversity of relationships going on. So you've got Brock and his wife, which is a total disaster and mess. And then you have Galen and the prince, which is kind of adorable because you've got this big burly man and this sweet bookish boy. (laughs) Just for whatever reason, that kind of dynamic just is adorable. And then, of course, you have Levon and Dao, who... (laughs) are very strong personalities in them of themselves and they started out as this friction and eventually they kind of found this common footing and started to understand each other and it developed into this beautiful thing and now they're getting married and it just makes my heart so happy and how did this spoiler section just become about (laughs) gushing about relationships I think because that is the major piece of this story is how these relationships are ultimately what ended up solving the crow folks problem and sending them home. Because if Brock hadn't been kicked out, if Brock hadn't had a daughter, he never would have started making the connections with the crow folk that he did and helping them go home. If the prince hadn't been taken by the other world or fallen into the other world and Galen running after him like a crazy man. He never would have been in the right place to help the crow folk go home. And then of course we've got Levon and Dao who are part of the Swan Island group and their missions, but ultimately their, their connection is what helped them understand what was going on in the first place it just, it just came together beautifully, and I love the fact that we did not have a dog death in this book. I don't know why she always does this to me. I think it's because we got a lot of the dog heartache out in the last book that we weren't going to do it in this book. In fact, Justice didn't really have a lot of screen time, which I'm a little sad about, but understand at the same time. I'm just just glad we didn't see a dog death. I don't like dog deaths. I think I'm just going to leave this here. I think I've babbled enough about the oddest things about this book. I would love to hear your thoughts on this series, how you think it fits into everything that Marillier has done in this world. Whether or not you enjoyed it, the characters, anything, tell me down below. I would love to hear your thoughts. Otherwise, if you'd like to see more content like this, subscribe, hit that bell, hit the like button if you're enjoying what I'm doing, because it really, really helps. It does. 
I heart your beautiful faces. Bye.